Hello friends, welcome to Tranquil Science. Our motto is to learn more and grow more. Today we are going to discuss about the cloning and a brief history of the clones. How much stuff you have to do by your own. Imagine how much easier life would be if you would have an exact copy of yours and would help you in doing things what you don't want to do. Well, there are a lot many scientists who believe that cloning would be drastically help humans to create a better world. But before discussing the pros and cons of cloning, here is a short presentation that will take you on a journey through the time and you can learn about the cloning history. Okay, let's find out what are the clones. If I ask you which is the most famous ship in the world, what would you say? A sheep called Dolly? But why Dolly is so famous? That's because Dolly was not born in the usual way as the other sheep do. She is actually the carbon copy of her mother, like an identical twin, who is six years older to herself. How interesting Dolly was the twin sister of her mother. She doesn't have a father. We all have fathers and mothers both. In fact, all animals as well. But the clone doesn't need to have both parents. So clones are the exact genetic copies of each other and cloning is the process by which an exact and identical copy of original can be made. Let's talk about the history of cloning. It's a rich scientific history span more than 100 years. Early cloning is believed to be around since 1600. Of course, there was only plant cloning where the plant cutting can simply be used to create a clone plants. See, for example, in this root tip has been used for the genetic clones. Long before, the birth of a dolly clone had been observed in both nature and in the labs. What are the natural clones? When a couple gives birth to identical twins, or triplets, the children are said to be the clone of each other. First scientifically animal cloning began in 1885. It was Hans Adolf who performed the animal technical cloning. The sea urchin are the simpler organism and can be easily observed during the development stages. So Hans demonstrated that Mere shaking would separate the two called zygote of the urchin into two different zygotes. Once separated, each cell grow into two separate but identical sea urchins. This experiment concluded that each cell in the early embryo has its very own genetic material and can grow into a full organism. 1902, there was another scientist named Hans Spemer who expanded the previous study about the cloning by performing first vertebrate cloning with salamanders. The salamander's embryonic cells were much more sticky than the sea urchin cells. So he used a baby hair to split the zygote into two and once the cell got separated, each cell grew into an adult salamander. But the only problem he faced was that the salamanders never fully developed and were unable to reproduce. Then, in 1928, Spiemann performed another experiment with salamanders. Used baby hair, this time for temporarily squeezing, so as to push the nucleus into one side of the cytoplasm. At 16 cell stage, he loosened the noose to let one of the nucleus back into the non-dividing side of egg, then separated his new cell which grew into a new salamander. This new salamander was identical copy of his parent. This experiment concluded that the nucleus from the early embryonic stage directs the growth of complete organism. 
In 1952, two scientists, Robert Briggs and the Thomas King, carried a new viable cloning technique called a nuclear transfer. Now, what is this nuclear transfer? Actually, it is a procedure in which the nucleus of a somatic cell, means any cell other than the reproductive cell, is transferred into an egg cell whose own nucleus has already been removed. So what they did actually is they transferred the nucleus from an early tadpole embryo into an enucleated egg of a frog. Then after the after this the resulting cell developed into a tadpole normally. The success of the nuclear transfer also made the scientists to carry the technique for cloning of mammals. The successful experiment of the nuclear transfer fascinates the scientists to carry this technique forward for the cloning of mammals as well. Example, in 1975, Derek Bromhall created first mammalian embryo of rabbit. In 1987, also the cows were added to the list of mammals. Previously, it was believed that once the cell got differentiated, which means when the cells start changing into different types of cells that form blood, liver, muscles, etc. They could not be used for generating a complete organism. Example, in a sheep, other cells, the cells for, uh, from the milk glands, could generate other other cells and unable to produce a complete sheep. In 1996, a landmark experiment was done by the Wilmot and the Campbell. They actually solved this problem by growing sheep other cells in a starvation condition, so as they behave similar to embryonic cells. Then they inserted the nucleus from these other cells into the enucleated egg cells. The electric shock was used to fuse the starved udder cells and incubated cells. They made 277 fused cells as you can see the nucleus donor was white face shape and the egg donor was a black face shape. These fused cells were then inserted in a several black face surrogated sheep. But out of 277 fused cells only one produced an embryo and that successfully gave birth to a developed lamb which is famously known as a dolly and that landmark date was July 5, 1996. Dolly born white face so it's clear that she had some genetic material as of the other cells she came from. So she is the clone of those other cells. Dolly has given normal birth to a lamb named Boonie Due to the lung disease, Dolly died at age of the six. People think it was due to the cloning process, but the scientists disagree. Cloning of Dolly brought this technique into the eyes of a public and then expanded number of list of cloned animals. In 1997, the rhesus monkey, Nettie and Ditu were the two successful clones. and also in this year another sheep clone poly was created leading up to the success scientists keep on conducting experiments and successfully clone other mammals as well maybe it's uh, cumulina mice goat and asian ox or mufflon and have a look there is a long list of the cloned mammals 2013 Sukhat Mitali Pau and his colleagues successfully used somatic cells nuclear transfer to cre create a human embryo for this experiment they took the skin cells from the patient and fused it into the donated egg cells then the electric shock was used to stimulate the cell division following the cloning controversy of 2004 2005 south korean scientists falsely claimed to have created embryonic stem cell line but no stronger evidence was present to evidence that the produced procedure was actually been successful thanks for watching this video on tranquil science channel 
and if you like it so please do share with others and we will discuss the pros and cons of cloning in our next topic on the tranquil science